of Jesus this morning. Come on, come on, come on. Let's bless the name of Jesus this morning. He inhabits the first time as people. I need everybody with breath in your lungs. The use of activities in your body. I need somebody to just shout out hallelujah. I need somebody to blow those horns this morning. I need somebody to wave those hands this morning. And let's just begin to give the King of all kings glory. Let's begin to give the Lord of all lords glory. Let's begin to give the great I am glory. Let's begin to give our way maker glory. Somebody ought to come on and give God glory this morning. Father God, we come before your throne of grace and mercy. Holy, oh God. We come this morning just to tell you thank you. We come to give you praise. We come to give you adoration. We come to give you glory because you are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. And besides you, oh God, there is no other. So God, we ask that as we enter into your gates this morning, as we enter into your courts this morning, we ask that you receive our praise. We ask that you receive our praise today, oh God. We ask that you be glorified. We ask that you be lifted up. God. We ask that you shift the weight of your glory today in this place today, oh God. We ask that you bless these crowns today, oh God. We ask that you bless these crowns today, oh God. We ask that you be the best of ones that will be listening, both near and far, oh God. We ask that you release your glory today, oh God. We ask that you release your peace. We ask that you release your love. We ask that you release your joy. We ask that you release your healing power. We ask that you release your comforting power. We ask that you release your grace. We ask that you release your mercy. But most of all, God, we ask that you release your anointing that flows, oh God. We ask for your anointing that destroys every yoke today, oh God. We ask that for your anointing that makes ministry do so easy, oh God. That will make ministry do the world easy today, oh God. We ask that you come right now, oh God, and meet us at the point of every need, oh God. Some may be hurt. Somebody may be down. Somebody may be sick. But oh God, we know you to be the lifter of our hands, oh God. We know you to be a strong tower. We know you to be a way maker. We know you to be a healer. So God, we ask that you heal like only you can heal. We ask that you to move like only you can move. We ask that you make ways like only you can make ways. We ask that you close doors like only you can close doors. We ask that you wrap your loving arms around us, oh God, like only you can, oh God. God, we ask that you send your power today, oh God. We ask
the word to you, but God told me to tell you to press on. Why are you worrying about things that you cannot change? No matter how much you cry, moan, bicker, and complain, it ain't gonna be no good. So just keep on pressing on. You're tossing and you're turning. You don't know which way it's going. But I'm here to let you know that you got faith in the size of a mustard seed. Why are you complaining? Why are you putting your mouth on one another? Church, you say that you love God. But love God because God is love. So if you love God, God can complain about you. So why are you complaining about God? People? We got to move on. We got to move on. But I, I thank you, Lord. 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 I'm only up here to do the 23rd sermon. But I got to let it go. I got to let it go. I got to let it go. Church, God been too good to me. It's turning around. 
but if not, I, I, I just want you to catch that right there. But if not, be it known unto you, O king, that we will not serve thy God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. I'll say that one more time, but if not, we still won't bow. I want to talk for a few minutes on the subject when life doesn't go as planned. I want to talk to a few people that can be a witness that sometimes life doesn't go as planned. I, I want to pose a question this morning. This question is for every person that's hearing my voice today. Asking what do you do when life doesn't go as planned. Uh, Donnie McClurkin asked some questions when he wrote the words, what do you do when you've done all you can? And it seems like it's never enough. He goes on to ask the question, how can you smile when your heart has been broken and filled with pain? These words are the anthem to so many of our lives today. When it doesn't look good and when things seem to be out of our control, what do you do when life doesn't go as planned? We are in the Old Testament, in the book of the prophet by the name of Daniel. And before we can get to chapter 3, we have to know what's going on prior. And y'all don't mind if I tell the story, do you? And if I, if Reverend Ivory was here, I could hear him in my ear saying, paint the picture. And Daniel, along with Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah, were in a point where life was not going as planned. But we, were, we are talking about young men who set out to become something in life. Their parents were raising them to become the men God would want them to be. And then one day, their homes are taken from them. And they are now held captive in Babylon. These men go from having the time of their life to now being ruled by the customs of the Babylonians. They would, that would be like Riviera Beach being taken over by a foreign nation. They would come and take the Bible out of my hand and pass me their religious pamphlets. But even in times like these, God was with them. And there ought to be a witness in the parking lot today and somebody watching by way of social media that knows I've been through a lot, but one thing I know is that God was with me. Amen. Sometimes I didn't like it, but he was with me. I made some mistakes in life, but he was with me. And somebody's asking, how do you know God is with you? And that answer is, I know because if it had not been for the Lord being with me, I wouldn't have made it. Now, now God is with them and the king sees their skill. He's impressed by their character. You see, I like that uh, these three were not like the other ones who were held captive in Babylon. Well, Psalm 137 said, by the rivers of Babylon, they wept when they remembered Zion. Uh, they hung their hearts in the willows and them that quiet can't help them captive required of them a song yes, and said to them sing us one of those songs of Zion yes, but these other captives they said how can we sing the Lord's song yes, in a strange land but these three they, they were not like them the king was impressed on how well they learned the language and literature of the Chaldeans and they were promoted from laborers to now being positioned in the king's court. It's just like God to promote you, even in a place where others thought you were nothing. And he'll give you favor in places where you were supposed to be bound. But with this royal promotion, the king decided he couldn't have been working as officials of Babylon with the names of Jerusalem descent. He changes Daniel's name to Belshazzar. 
changes Hananiah to Shadrach, changes Michelle to Meshach, and Azariah to Abednego. The thing that gets me is that even through all of this, the king changed their tradition. The king changed their location. The king changed their names, but it was something he couldn't change. He couldn't change their nature. The king could not change what was on the inside. And somebody wants to know, why is it that every time the enemy hits me, I keep coming back for more? It's because I'm supposed to be down, but I can lift up my head. It's because there's something on the inside. It cannot be shaken. It cannot be moved. It won't be changed based on what's going on around me. You ought to tell somebody I got something on the inside. The king, the king now invites them to feast at his table where they have meat and drink. But they decide not to eat like everybody else. They say, just give us vegetables and water and let us see who will be the stronger. You, you see, they understood that they got their strength from another table. They, they understood that they, they were children of God and they were on another level that everybody just couldn't understand. You see, when you're a child of God, you walk different, you talk different, you live different. They want to see how come I'm trying to pull them down and they're steady rising. It's because I get my strength from another table. I get my strength from somewhere else. I, I don't want to, they don't want to see you make it, but you keep achieving every goal set before you. It's because I get my strength from on high. I'm so glad today that I don't get my strength like everybody else. There's a story that a camel, when it needs strength to pick up a load, that camel has to get down on his front legs and bend his knee to get strength. And I'm so glad today that I'm a little bit like that camel. When I need some strength, I got to bend the knee. When, when I need some strength and encouragement and I need to be fed, I got to get down on my knees and the master will pick up my heavy load. Now the king has given them position and set them over the affairs of Babylon. After Daniel interprets his dream in chapter 2. But then in chapter 3, he had a golden image made. And scripture said it was three score cubits high, six cubits wide, and it stood on the plains of Dora in the province of Babylon. The king calls for all the officials to come to the grand opening of his new golden image. The decree went out that when you hear the music, you ought to bow down and worship the golden image. And those who did not bow would be cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. When he looked around and I can see the king said, give me the guest list. The king looked at the guest list and he checked off the princes. He checked off the governors. He, he saw the captains and the judges, the treasurers and the counselors, the sheriffs and the rulers of that particular province. He had to check the list again, but he didn't see the names of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. One of the king's men came to him and said to the king, O oh king, you made a decree that when you hear the music, everybody is to stop, bow down and worship the golden image that you made. The man said to the king that it was those certain Jews that you set over the affairs of Babylon. They are the ones that did not bow. They are the ones that were caught not worshiping. And, and you know, I just think about this every time I read this scripture. If the king made a decree 
for everybody to bow down. Yes, sir, Brother Johnson, if I'm bowed down with my eyes closed, worshiping God, mm -hmm. how do I see who else is not bowing down and worshiping God? Yes, sir. I, I have to ask somebody today, and I'm here to tell some of these spectators today. Right. I, I got to tell you, how can you see what I'm doing? When you're supposed to be bowing down, how can you see what's going on with me when you're supposed to be worshiping God? No, no, no. I don't come here just to see myself dancing and shouting, but sometimes you ought to pick them up and put them down for yourself. Don't come to hear the choir sing it all the time. Yo, nobody can't hear how bad you sound. Turn up your windows and sing in your car. You know, growing up in the church, I, I could look at some people and say, you know, if Missionary Donaway stood up, I know the choir was singing real good. I could look and say, if Sister Callan Braden made her way from the back to the front, we were having a good service. Yes, sir. I can look and say, if Sister Annie Farrell, Sister Kathy Wilson, Sister Missionary Laura were out on the floor, we were having a good time. I used to say, well, if, if Sister Norma Williams and Reverend Jackson got happy, we were having a good time. I, I used to say we weren't having church until so Sister Patricia Lewis got to step in. I say we, we weren't having church till missionaries fell, the hat flew off. But, but something happened that I started missing what was going on with everybody else. Because I was worshiping and I was praising. And that's what you need to do today. And I solicit to you, don't look at nobody else. But you ought to get what you need from the Lord. But this man tells the king they didn't bow. The king, filled with rage and fury, commanded them to come and stand before him. There come Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He asked, is it true that you did not bow and worship my gods? If I can bring this text to modern day, the king had to ask them, I'll ask you again, just in case you didn't get my email. I have to ask you again, just in case you didn't see my post on Facebook. I got to ask you again, just in case my text message didn't go through. Did you not bow knowing that the consequence of not bowing would be you being cast into the burning fiery furnace? Anybody in here today, this ain't for everybody, but somebody been under some pressure like that. When you know the consequence could be, I might lose my job, but I'm going to stand up for what's right. I, I might not be liked by many, but I'm going to stand up for what's right. I, I might not be, I might be talked about, but I'm going to stand up for what's right. What do you do when life doesn't go as planned? Even though it wasn't going the way they thought it was supposed to be going. Here we are getting promoted and now we are about to be put in burning fire. Lord, this is not what we planned. But they kept on going. And that's what I'm here to tell somebody this morning. Just keep on going. I know you thought you would be further than you are now, but just keep going. I know that you, you may not feel like it and life is worth living, but just keep on going. I know you don't want, I know you want to give up, but just keep on going. I know somebody's telling you just end it, but just keep on going. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said, O king, we are not careful to answer you in this manner. But we're not going to bow. They said, King, I know you let us eat at your table. But we're not going to bow. I know you gave us positions in your kingdom. But I'm sorry, we're not going to bow. Scripture says in verse 17, If it be so, 
our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of your hand uh, see this is where I get happy because verse 18 says but if not we still not going to bow or serve any images that you set up is there anybody here today that has a but if not praise you, you see this takes a different type of person in school I, I had to learn about probabilities and when you have a coin flip there's a probability that the heads are going to be up and there's another probability that it's going to land tails up but I had to learn I had to get out of my collegiate mindset and put on my theological mindset and say Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not care about probability. They did not care if the tail was up or if the heads was up. All they were saying, if it lands on heads, I'll serve him. If it lands tails up, I'll serve him. If it looks good, I'll serve him. If it don't look good, I'm going to serve him. And there ought to be somebody here today. Y'all give me a minute, musicians. Somebody have to ask yourself the question. I know I can serve them when it's going my way. But is there anybody here that can say when it's not going my way? I know when it's looking good, I can serve it. Oh, I can shout real good when it's looking good. But when it's not looking good, can anybody still show up to church and say, I'll enter into his gates with thanksgiving. I'll enter into his courts with praise. Somebody ought to say, I'll serve him in the rain. I, I'll serve him in the sunshine. I'll serve him in my pain. I made up in my mind that I'm going to serve him. Somebody will blow your horn if you're going to serve him. Somebody ought to wave at your neighbor. Encourage your neighbor next to you and say, keep serving. Keep serving, keep serving. I know it's not looking good, but keep serving. I got, I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. But they had a but if not praise I'm going to keep on serving them you know many of us when life gives us or deals us a bad hand what we really want to say is Eli, Eli Lama Sabetani my God my God why hast thou forsaken me but I made up in my mind that I'm not going to say those words. But I'll pray as Jesus prayed in the garden. And say nevertheless not my will. But your will be done. Because I know your will is the best thing for me. I know your will is the way I need to be walking. I know your will. Even though it might not feel good. It's going to work out for my good. Somebody said it don't, it don't feel good right about now. But even though it don't feel good, in the end it's going to work out for you good. Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury. Scripture says his face changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He commanded that the heat of the fiery furnace be turned seven times hotter. Then it ought to have been. Yes, sir. He called for the most mighty men in his army to bind them and cast them in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Somebody here wants to know why did they make the fire seven times harder? Yes, I, I know I don't know it all, but if I can just use the exegete the text for a few minutes, do you mind if I do it? I believe that when they made the fire seven times hotter, in modern day, when you call 911, the dispatcher answers and says, what is the case of your emergency? If they would have said, 
the tree outside is on fire. They would have just sent a few trucks. They would have just said, we'll send somebody to hose out the fire. But when the community is on fire, they have to send the whole city. They'll call surrounding cities to come help put out the fire. They'll call surrounding counties to come help put out the fire. And all I'm trying to say, somebody wants to know, why does it seem like this fire is getting worse and worse in my life? It's because the greater the fire, the greater the rescue. The greater the fire, the greater the rescue. The greater the trouble, the greater the deliverance. The greater your pain, the greater the promise. The greater, woo! Yeah. 
fiery furnace. And when he looked in the fire, the scripture said, these men were in the fire, walking around in the fire. But this is the thing I want to tell you. If you look at the text in its original form in Aramaic, the word walking means walking and dancing with joy. And so these men were in the fire. Walking and dancing. Praise God. The thing I need you to know is when the king looked in the fire, if my granddaddy was preaching today, he would say, never can never look out. He said, I got my bachelor's degree. I went to the University of Babylon, and I know I can count. He said, the king said, I got a master's degree. King said, I got a PhD. And I know I can count, but I see one, two, When I come out of the fire, 
to meet Jesus in a personal way. Catch your fire. 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 Catch your fire.